Good afternoon and welcome to Stadium MK for today's Sky Bet League One fixture with Portsmouth. We would like to thank our official partner, Suzuki. Right, let's look at some of the selected stats of both teams. The Dons find themselves placed at 14th in the League One table after a run of two victories, two defeats and one draw. With three wins and one defeat and one draw in their last five games, Pompey sit in sixth place. As the attacking stats show, Portsmouth have a higher ratio in goals scored, assists and shots attempted, while Russell Martin's men fare better in passes completed and attacking duels won. In the defensive stats, Portsmouth come out on top in defensive actions, interceptions, aerial duels and ball recoveries. With regards to the Dons team stats, Cameron Jerome is still the clear leader. But Scott Fraser is now in contention and the talented Will Grigg is also featured. Portsmouth's top goal scorer is John Marcus with Curtis, Harness and Naylor close behind. The new Suzuki Hybrid Range. For you, me, her, him, everyone. The club was founded in 1898 and home matches are played at Fratton Park in Milton, Portsmouth. Portsmouth have been the top tier league champions of England twice in consecutive years 1948-49 and 49-50. Portsmouth have also won the FA Cup twice in 1939 and more recently in 2008. Between 2003 and 2010, the club spent seven consecutive seasons in the Premier League. However, the club's fortunes declined in 2010 and 13 when the club entered administration twice and were relegated three times. The club was saved from liquidation after being bought out by the fan-owned Pompey Supporters Trust. On the 19th of March 2021, Danny Cowley was appointed head coach of Portsmouth. In his first game at charge at the club, Portsmouth would come from behind to beat Ipswich Town 2-1. He's currently played 5, won 4 and lost 1. On the 9th of September 2019, Cowley left Lincoln to become the new Huddersfield Town Manager. His form there was playing 40 games, won 13, drawn 11 and lost 16. During Cowley's first season in charge of Lincoln, he oversaw the club's promotion back to the Football League, doing so by winning the National League title with two games to spare. Portsmouth's recent form is impressive. A 2-1 win at Shrewsbury, another 2-1 win at Rochdale, another victory at Wigan Athletic, but a loss at the Brewers and a draw at Crew Alexander. Harness made his first competitive start for Burton Albion in September 2013 at the age of 17. He helped the club to win the League 2 title in the 2014-15 season and then had loan spells for Dickerson and Aldershot Town. He then helped Burton to win promotion out of League 1 in the 2015-16 season. Following that success, he joined Port Vow on loan for the 2017-18 season. He signed for Portsmouth in July 2019 and played for the club on the losing side of the 2020 EFL Trophy Final. On the 13th of June 2016, Marcus signed for Doncaster Rovers on a two-year deal, having been previously linked with a move to Gillingham. He was given the Doncaster number no. 9 shirt ahead of the new season. 
And then in July 2019, he signed a three-year deal with Portsmouth. He's pulled on the shirt 68 times and scored 22 goals so far. Curtis is an Irish professional footballer who plays either on the left wing or as a striker for Portsmouth and the Republic of Ireland. He started his career with Derry City in 2015, spending four seasons there and amassing 100 appearances and 24 goals. He then agreed a deal with Portsmouth in May 2018. In March 2019, he won his first senior honour, the EFL Trophy. He's pulled on the Pompey shirt 108 times and scored 29 goals. He's definitely a player to look for this afternoon. Following your heart, in spirit, in soul, you make every tackle, score every goal. You're part of it, wherever you are in the world. From the first minute, until the last kick. Victories, heartbreaks, you're part of the fabric, the passion, devotion, supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one. Abiding loyalty, togetherness, that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There is no better way for you to get closer to your club. And with I follow sales supporting them, there is no better way to show your love. Can't be there. Be there with I follow. Portsmouth started the game in fine form. Ben Close had a drive blocked by Conor McGrandles, then midfielder Andy Cannon sailed the rebound harmlessly over Lee Lickle's goal. Then on 11 minutes, Harrison flashed wide with a shot on the run, 18 yards from goal. Houghton then got himself in the way of a try from Marcus Harnett, following a Portsmouth corner. The first goal of the encounter came when Houghton played a delightful pass over the top for Healy to chase. James Bolton got his head to the ball, that only diverted it into Healy's path. The striker made no mistake when faced with a one-to-one, -one, confidently placing his effort past the Pompey goalkeeper to make it 1-0. The Dons made it 2-0 soon after. Lewington started the move with an outside of the boot pass over to Healy, who in turn played the ball inside to Mason. Naylor stuck a foot in to intercept the ball, but it carried it through to McGrandles, who 20 yards from goal didn't hesitate before calling his shot home into the top right-hand corner of the net. In the second half, the Dons continued to press and looked for the third goal to put the game to bed. And it arrived with five minutes to play and came the courtesy of a red-hot Alex Gilby. Nombi won possession on the halfway line before threading a pass through to the MK Dons number eight, who raced into the area before lifting a delicate chip over and into the cow shed net. Portsmouth grabbed the late goal through Ronan Curtis but it didn't prevent the Dons from picking up an important three points and they went into the new year with a renewed sense of confidence. Screwfix proudly supports football at home. Josh, let's start with the beginning of your career. When did you perhaps realise that football was uh, an avenue and a career you could go down? Um, well, yeah, I've been playing since, uh, football since I was seven years old. I signed my first professional contract when I was 17. So that's when I properly thought, yeah, um, I could actually do something with it kind of thing um, but yeah ever since I was seven six five years old I've always been 
been playing football. Um, so thankfully I'm living my dream now. Both of your brothers are also players. What was that like growing up in your house? I imagine it was always in, in the garden kicking footballs. Yeah, exactly what you said. Um, there's four of us, uh, four boys and one girl. My sister's the eldest and there's uh, four boys and we all play football. Um, so yeah, it was always 2v2s in the garden um, from when we got back from school till dinner time and then even after dinner time till bedtime, we was always playing in the garden. So yeah, I loved it. I imagine you know when when you're a kid and you're playing, it's good memories. But now, when you can offer them advice, they can watch your games and you can watch each other. It must be a really proud moment for you. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, Zach, the the one next down from he he's at Oxford City. He, he was at Chelsea as well. Um, growing up, he's he's doing well now, so I can offer him advice. And George, the 19 year old, he's at um, he's at Chelsea playing with the 23s. So. He's gone through the same as what I went through, um, so it's good to good to speak to him and offer him um, all the advice I can um, help him with and the things to do, the things not to do. Because yeah, obviously I made a few mistakes um, grow, growing up, so hopefully he doesn't make the same mistakes as me. You mentioned Chelsea; it's where you made your professional debut. Can you remember the moment when you came on? Were you nervous? Were you excited? What was the feeling going through you? Yeah, of course. I think uh, every young lad reminds uh, um, remembers their debut like it was yesterday. And yeah, I remember warming up and um, Ray Wilkins shout my name, but I st- it still didn't feel real. We was away in the um, in the Champions League, so I did not expect to come on uh, one one bit. But no, I come on. Th- uh, luckily, we were, I think it was like three or four one so we already won the game so it was a nice easy game to come on to and everyone everyone helped me and congratulated me after so yeah it was a special moment you mentioned Ray Wilkins there and obviously a a big loss in football what did he do for your career and how much are you grateful for his impact on you yeah no he he was massive Um, there was a a tournament called the Cobham Cup and it invited like the top teams around Europe and even a few Brazilian teams and he came over and um, he actually gave me player of the tournament that tournament and I think that's when people started to talk about my name and stuff and he gave me good um, mentions in the Youth Cup and stuff and then when I went over with him he would always uh, spend time with me after training speaking to me during training yeah so he was massive while well, at Chelsea, you had a, a, a few loans away. At such an age, they almost teach you, you know, how to be a human, how to how to cook for yourself, how to clean for yourself, and live your own life. Yeah, no, exactly. Just exactly what you said. I had um, cooking lessons as well just before I got my own apartment. So they do uh, teach you to grow up at a very a very young age, which is good, which is good in a way because I was very independent um, on my own. So no, it was all good made over 100 appearances for, for Brentford in the Championship for such a historic and big club in the Championship. What was your time like there and how much did you enjoy it? No, I loved it. I didn't get as much game time as I wanted. Um, that's down to injuries and stuff. Um, but no, like you said, I got over 100 appearances, which was which was great at a club like Brentford. Played really good football, played under some fantastic managers. Um, the one that really stood out was obviously Dean Smith. He helped me out massively, him and Richard O'Kelly. And he's gone on to bigger and better things now at, um, at Villa. And he's doing a fantastic job there. But no, um, I loved my uh, time at Brentford, uh, the philosophy and everything they do there is is really good. Away from football then, um, a kid's, dad to two kids, sorry, how much has having kids sort of changed your life? Oh, massively. Like, it just makes you have a different outlook on life, really. I'm loving every minute of it. Don't get me wrong, it is hard work. I've got a two and a half year old and uh, the youngest is nine months, so they're quite close together, but no, I'm loving every minute of it. If you have a bad day at work, you just walk through the door and obviously they just put a put a smile on your face straight away so so yeah no I'm loving it um, and yeah I think I'll have a few more I, I imagine I imagine you like you say that when you have a bad day or perhaps a, a bad result going home and uh, you know having uh, having two kids there sort of just puts everything back into perspective yeah no, exactly what you just said um, obviously it's the worst feeling in the world losing on losing on a Saturday or a Tuesday night or whatever but then yeah you do get back to your kids and you do realise what's important in life kind of thing um, so yeah no I'm, I'm, in lo- I'm loving it yeah I'm loving it we'll bring it full circle and come back to MK Dons then you said when you signed that you know this is a team that play the way you want to play and, and you'll enjoy playing in it just how much are you enjoying playing for Russell Martin? you know I'm absolutely loving it and I didn't realise how much I was going to 
enjoy it until I'm here play, playing the games and stuff. And yeah, there's a few things we need to iron out and stuff and we are going to make mistakes, but that's all part and parcel of it. Um, even the top teams that play the, the star we want, the Man Cities of the world, the Bayern Munich, they, they're still making mistakes now. So that is part and parcel of it. We're on a, um, a learning curve. We've got a lot of young players but also we've got a lot of experience as well. So, no, I think um, we're on the right track. Uh, we've put in some fantastic performances recently and I'm um, really excited to be here. Nice one, Josh. Thank you, mate. Briege Pasty, Baking Life Special. Hello and welcome to this weekend's fixture, MK Dons vs Portsmouth. Pompeii have been amongst the promotion contenders all season, and as we enter the business end, they know that every point will make a difference in their bid for championship football. Portsmouth have recently appointed Danny Cowley as their head coach, with his brother Nicky as assistant head coach. MK Don supporters will remember them as the duo who took Lincoln City to the League 2 title in 2019 when we also won promotion. Pompey play at Fratton Park and have done so since they were founded in 1898. Here's a little bit of a trivia for you. Portsmouth in the, is the only English professional football club which is not located in the mainland of Great Britain. The club and the city of Portsmouth are both built on Port Sea Island. Who knew? Okay, who's ready to test their knowledge? Can you guess who these MK Dons players are based on the symbols shown? Okay, first up, let's start with an easy one. Just say what you see. Okay, you got it, it's Jay Bird. Okay, the next one is a little bit more complicated. Who do you think this is? Did you get it right? It's Dean Lewington. Next up, and a little trickier. It is of course, Ben Gladwin. Next one. That was David Kasumu. And finally. Yes, it's Kieran Agard. How did you do? Joining us in the hot seat this week is our new January signing forward, Charlie Brown. Firstly, and I'm very sorry to ask this, how annoying is it to be asked about Snoopy and Peanuts by anyone over a certain age? <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm more than used to it now, so sure, just a. Uh... A laugh and yeah, used to it, but uh, yeah. On to more serious stuff. How excited were you to join MK Dons in January? Oh, I was over the moon, really, really excited to, like I said, uh, to try and get into first team football and and start start playing like proper football. Um, I was ready for the next step up, so I was really excited. Do you have a favourite moment from your time at Chelsea? Oh, there's quite a few. I think the season we won the quadruple, um, there's a great group of lads, a lot of the boys, now you the household names and um, it's just a great season all round, uh, winning four trophies. What Chelsea player did you learn the most from? I'd just say going over the first team in general, you learn from every one of them in a different way. Um, the, the standard was incredible, so any time that you got a chance to train with the first team was, was, was great. What's your favourite moment in an MK Dons shirt so far? Uh, my first goal against North Northampton. Um, obviously it got us the win and three points and yeah, it was obviously my first chance and everything, so everything come together. Have you set yourself a personal goal or target for next season? Uh, to, to, to play more games, I want to be uh, one of the, a big player for this team and obviously 10 goals minimum, yeah. Do you remember the first professional football game you ever watched? Who was playing and who did you go with? Probably been Ipswich Town, so my family is from there. Um, I think I was probably one or two years old. Um, and yeah, I can't really remember anything obviously because I was that age. <laughs> 
As you started your career at Portman Road, how did it feel to play against Ipswich last week? Uh, obviously, my first thing was when I coming on, just thinking I want to score and get us the win. Um, but it's was, it was quite strange playing against quite a few of my mates and boys that I'd played with coming through Ipswich Academy. But yeah, it's, it's good. What advice would you give to any aspiring young player that wanted to turn professional? Say, it's a uh, you got to work really hard and. Be prepared to, to sacrifice a lot in your life to, to get to where you want to be, but rewards are worth it. What are you most looking forward to after lockdown? Uh, going out for meals, getting restaurants, um, just being able to, to go out and just live life normally again, I suppose. Thank you, Charlie. I'm looking forward to getting back to Stadium MK. Hopefully you will all be back soon. Well, that's it for this week. Enjoy the game and come on you dons! The new Suzuki Hybrid Range. For you, me, her, him, everyone. Hi everyone, hope you're safe and well. Um, just obviously the usual home match update from, from myself. Um, last time, Since the last time we spoke, or I spoke, and you listened, uh, against We Played Crew at home, obviously a really disappointing uh, result. Um, we played for a really slow start to the game, a really poor first 30 minutes, uh, which made it really difficult for us. Um, followed that up with a good point away to Ipswich, a team fight for promotion. Um, to get into the playoffs, a really good performance. We should win. We should have won the game. We have a really good chances. Going to make some good saves. Um, so it's frustrating for us just to get a point after a really good performance and dominating the game. And then obviously on Tuesday night, the Lincoln game, um, losing four 0 was really hard to take. Uh, two goals, two two mistakes led to two goals. Um, and then a penalty that wasn't a penalty in our opinion, and then a free kick that was obviously put into the top corner. So, four 0 I think is um, whether we deserve to win or not is it is another question. We didn't have enough. Uh, we had some really good balls into the box. We didn't have enough people really committing to throw themselves uh, or give themselves up for the team to go and score a goal. Um, although some of the football we played was was great, but two mistakes led to two goals, and that really cost us. Um, and then. Obviously, as I said already, you know the other goals followed, and uh, but I don't think it was a four-nil game. I don't think it was a fair reflection of the game. We had the same amount of shots as them inside their box, um, and it just wasn't to be our night. So, as usual, we have to uh, win with a defeat like that. It's the first time we've been beaten by a score like that. But as you, whenever that happens, you ex you want a reaction. You expect the team, our group of players, with how they've been to to react really well and respond really well um, in today's game. A really tough one against Portsmouth, another team fighting to get into the playoffs and get promoted out of the league. We knew this would be a tough run of fixtures, um, but we are home. We are home. We need to make sure we get back to, to winning games of football and scoring goals and creating more chances. And uh, that'll be the aim for us today against a team that have been um, you know, in good form since their new manager have come in. So it'll be a tough game, but it's one we're looking forward to um, and one that we hope we can uh, improve and uh, perform better um, than we did on Tuesday. And uh, so enjoy the game, look after yourselves, take care, and hopefully I'll be speaking to you next time after three points. Following your heart, in spirit, in soul. You make every tackle, score every goal. You're part of it, wherever you are in the world. From the first minute until the last kick. Victories, heartbreaks, 
You're part of the family. The passion. Devotion. Supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one. Abiding loyalty. Togetherness that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and matchday commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There's no better way for you to get closer to your club. And when I follow sales supporting them, there's no better way to show your love. And you can't be there. Be there with I follow.